stop because you just found the easiest balayage tutorial you are ever going to find. Yeah, today I'm gonna to show you the easiest brunette balayage technique that you're gonna be able to do on any of your clients and that they are going to drool over. So get ready and buckle up, friend, because you are going to love this tutorial. Like, just look at the results. All right, let's get to it. Hey, welcome. If we haven't met, my name's Don Bradley and you are in the best place for students, stylists, and salon owners. Let's get ready and go. All right, let's get into it. Here is the before. You can see some very grown out highlights that are kind of that blorange, a lot of her natural up there at the top. Oh, I love it. Such an amazing palette. So this is Alexa. We are going to be doing this technique on her so I can show you. There's tons of natural so I can show you, but also some pre-light and stuff. So, I mean, it's always great when we see stuff on virgin hair, but that's not the reality, right? So I want to have a great model today to show you this technique that is going to be a game changer. So first of all, I use the black lights from Oligo Cool Tone Blonde. I did not use 40 Vol. Oops, I put that in the shot incorrectly. I used 20 Vol. So just know that right there. I was thinking clay lightener. If you want to see clay lightener and why I would use 40 Vol, click the little card up here. Um, but know that I used 20 Vol. Um, I did use the scale, but I like to mix up off the scale. I don't know. It's this weird thing I do. I mean, we've all got weird quirks, right? Um, Poppy came as well. I just, of course I had to keep a shot of her in there. Isn't she the sweetest? Okay, on to the reason why you're here. So I went in the front first because I wanted to have that impact at the front. Now, when starting at the front, I always want to warn you, you wanna make sure that um, you're watching it carefully. I've had a heat reaction before on client's hair. It is not fun. And thank God that time that it happened, I started at the back. Cause heat reaction, if you're not aware, it's from mineral buildup or medication or hormones or like whatever's going on in our internal health, her hair basically broke off. So you have to be pretty confident, know um, your client's hair and know how it's gonna react, but also keep a close eye on it. Okay, so I'm starting here. She has kind of a widow's peak. So I'm starting on an angle and I'm doing back to back foils. Now, of course, I'm tucking them in on the sides to anchor them so they don't fall out. And I'm going to take another back to back section here. Come on, arm, get out of the way. <laughs> uh, I am filming with a tripod and my camera, as you can tell, and I didn't know my arm got in the way. Uh, if you've been around my channel for a while, you know, I keep it real around here and pretty raw. Also, I always like to ask, do you fold your foils backwards over your comb or forwards? Let me know in the comments. It's always a super interesting debate. I go backwards because if I need to adjust, because there's no such thing as perfect, and even 20 years now into the industry, there are times where I have to go and adjust the foil and I can then adjust it with it going backward. But I wanna know those of you guys that do it forward, why forward? Let me know. Anyway, you can see here, I'm going right up to the root as close as possible. I'm not doing any teasy lights or anything yet because I want that front piece to be bold and face framing. So there's two back to back. Here I'm going in for my third and a nice shot of my arm once again for you. <laughs> and I mean, we're, we move a lot when we work, right? So coming into my third back to back using my Framar um, Ethereal, Ethereal. I mean, if you've watched a couple of videos back, I could not pronounce that one or remember what it was called. So third back to back, I'm using nice fine slices. You can see how I push my comb up there at the end with the foil to get the foil nice and tight to the scalp. That is something that was ingrained into me back in 2001 when I first got out of cosmetology school to get it as close as possible to the root. And I'm going really soft and gently. I'm being gentle with her ends. They are pre-lightened, but her hair is pretty resilient. So. I wasn't too worried about applying on the ends. There we go, anchoring it in, and I believe I take one more slice here to get that nice effect, and then I'll move on to the next side. So, I mean, I always feel like I need to like talk the whole way through, but I'm gonna let you just like watch for a sec, okay?
Okay, I'm back. Chatty Kathy over here. Going over to the other side, you can see where the recession happens. Now that doesn't mean she has a receding hairline. It just means around our temples, our hairline goes back. So I am going, putting the foil kind of at a 45 degree angle, but parallel to her hairline. So when she pulls it back, it's going to have a nice look to it. It's not going to look stripey or, you know, tiger stripes or anything like that. So once again, I go back to back over on this side, kind of doing the same thing. So I'm working around her hairline. I'm going to do four foils on this side again. So once again, I'm going to zip it and let you enjoy. Right onto the hairline. Now, good old Don's shoulder is gonna play a bit of a part in this one. <laughs> but you can see there, I took a nice fine weave because I wanna have a softness around her hairline. And so, oh, there, it changed my angle. Uh, going right up. Now, this can be a tough one because the face. I mean, you don't have something really solid. Now, if you use um, foil boards, that can help, but it's a little tricky. I mean, and you can tell here, I uh, honestly, if you didn't know, I've been in the industry for 20 years, but the past seven years, I did all, almost all open air balayage. So you can see I'm a little, little rusty when it comes to this, but I mean, I mean it's like riding a bike. I get back into it pretty quickly. Um, but here you go. I can, you can see I'm putting the lightener on. It's pretty floppy. I mean, I would love to know your tips and tricks for making sure that you can stay sturdy around the face with or without a board. I'm curious if you use a foil board. I've never used one. I find it actually harder to use, um, but I'm curious your thoughts on this. Okay, so you can see I'm kind of, I mean, as I'm doing this over voiceover, I'm trying to use my hands to show you. I'm kind of moving at an angle, uh, a pivot, we shall say, around that temple and going up. Here is where I start to back comb to do a little teasy lights, I guess. I mean, the reason why I back comb is just to give a little bit more softness. I'm still going to go through in shadow root. Now I get a lot of questions about like why shadow root if you're already teasing. I guess it's just kind of an extra layer of protection and because I'm not teasing every single section I need to shadow root anyway if that makes sense. But the teasing what it does is that when you comb it out it gets rid of that demarcation line and so I guess really you don't need a, a shadow root on a teased section but since I am going to be shadow rooting those front pieces anyway um, I have no issue with kind of going through and root tapping or whatever I mean there's so many freaking names for it can we all just agree that it's kind of annoying <laughs> um, but here you can see I'm kind of working up I'm pivoting from the hairline so it's perpendicular I mean parallel to the hairline to keep it a nice soft blend without chunky stripes. But then I want to also be parallel to the part line so it has a more blended look without stripes on the part line. And now the part line is obviously in a different position than the hairline and that's why I'm pivoting. I hope this makes sense to you. If you need a visual, let me know. Um, that does layer one more added complexity to editing this video. Um, but I do, if you do need a visual, let me know because I would definitely want to help with that. Um, but you can see it's kind of like rotating uh, counterclockwise, I mean, does it, do we ever talk about those terms? Um, to become more parallel with her part when we get up to the top. So it has a less of a tiger stripes look and more of a blended look. So, um, I mean, sometimes I'm not the greatest with words, so you just let me know. Now, another really important thing to keep in mind with all of this is you want to make sure you have the right kind of clients in your chair. Here's the thing. Oh, shoulder making a debut. I'm going to go on a tangent while the shoulder tries to get in its way is 
you want to do these techniques, but you want to make sure it's doing the right technique on a person for the right result. At the end of the day, people are paying you to do a service. And so you want to make sure you're attracting, if this or these are the services you want to do and you love doing, you want to make sure you're attracting the right kind of clients in your chair, correct? And I mean, I love dishing out all the info on technique, but what I love more is giving business building and client building advice. I don't know if you knew that already. If you maybe, I don't know if you follow me over on Instagram. If you don't, come on over there. Oh my gosh, we have so much fun over there. I mean, reels are my jam and I have so many goofy ones. Um, but really, I really love, like I love being able to teach you these skills and techniques and that's so important. But even more important is knowing how to get the right clients, how to deal with them how to say no to requests that aren't within your wheelhouse or your specialty, and how to get a booked solid uh, schedule with clients wanting the services you love giving. So if that's your jam, check out the description below. I have a couple links. I have some free resources. Um, I have my client building bundle, which is 37 bucks, which is going to help you get people in your chair that you want in your chair, the ones that respect you, that pay you. Because I mean, these services aren't cheap. Look at all the foils that I have in her hair, the time it's going to take. I mean, the cost of the product alone, that is one of the biggest things I see people undercharging because they don't know the cost of their products. Now, if you're not familiar with Salon Scale, that helps you in a really easy, in like basically one extra minute of service, figure out what your cost of your color is. It doesn't figure out the cost of your foils, but I, there's some really awesome resources over there. Click the link um, in the description below to show you how you can cover those costs as well. Because if you're not covering, I mean, we get in our head, right? I hope you're also enjoying this tutorial and are following along. If, you're, if there's anything that you want me to touch base on that's going on right now, you let me know. But I feel like it's pretty cut and dry here. But so many stylists, myself included, used to get in my head about the dollar amount I had to tell my client at the end of the service. I was like, oh my gosh, they're not going to like it. I had this weird number. And I mean, my number for the longest time was $200. If their service came over $200, I like, you know, it's like the nervous sweats started to happen. And regardless of how much time, how much product, it was $200. I felt weird about it. And I see this happening a lot with my students as well. Wait, pause, I'm gonna come back to this, the back. Okay, you can see I've changed the angle. I mean, I don't know if you know, but I got diagnosed with ADHD and you can tell in the way I'm talking to you right now. But I just wanna show you how I'm doing the back once again, because the back of the hair falls differently, not with the part line. I don't wanna keep the same angle. So you can see there I'm going more horizontal with the way the hair falls. So that has a more blended look. Okay, back to the cost of products. So I'm curious, tell me in the comments below, what's that number for you? What's that number that you get nervous sweats? You can feel like, you know, maybe your palms get sweaty. You can feel a drip of sweat going down your back when you have to tell your client it's a certain dollar amount, regardless of how much product you used. And so one of the coolest things I found is when I got, got to know about Salon Scale, which Alicia and I like are from the same city, the CEO, and she's so freaking rad. And the fact that this exists now may, is a game changer for our industry. It'll tell you exactly what your product's costing you. And then it takes away that weird feeling about charging your client a certain amount because you know you're not pocketing it all. I mean, the toners alone are what gets me. I mean, we didn't, I didn't use toner when I first started out in the industry. It wasn't really a thing, which is so unreal. But now like my toners actually cost like, I would say double or triple what the lightener costs. And so our services cost a lot more than they ever used to. We need to be charging so that we make a profit. So we can break the stigma that our industry is poor, impoverished, not making any money. I mean, we have the ability to, we have the skill and talent, we should be getting paid. We need to get out of our own heads. Anyway, tangent, I wanna help you build a business, as you can tell, that not only gives people awesome hair, but sets you up for success in the long run. Okay, back to the hair. So you can see I'm leaving a little bit of her ends out because she does have that pre-lightened. I mean, it's pretty messy, but I'm kind of a messy colorist. Are you a messy colorist? Like I like to keep it neat and tidy, but I'm not super, I'm not going to get into the whole perfectionist mode. I mean, perfectionist mode is a procrastination technique and a self-sabotage technique. And I mean, anyone that tries to pretend, I mean, I'm going to get a little preachy here, but there's no such thing as perfect. There literally is no such thing as perfect. And I mean, you can do the best hair ever and someone might not like it because their tastes are different. So I want you to go easy on yourself there. So you can see there I'm pushing the foil in, <clears throat> excuse me, and I'm making sure that I don't go too much in, I don't go into the teasing, but there I'm just softening up those lines there just to keep that blend. I mean, 
like I said, I've done a lot of clay lightener open air balayage over the last seven years. And so I really, really like the blend. And with foils, I try to mimic it as much as possible. You can't get it quite the same. You're always going to get a little bit more of a demarcation line, but you do get more lift with foils. I mean, there's, there's, a, a, there's a give and take, there's pros and cons to both sides. Okay. So, I mean, I've gotten really chatty over here. I'm going to let you enjoy the rest of this, this part of the video and I'll come back and tell you about more later. Okay, back hairline. This is another tricky one, just like the front hairline. We got the ear, uh, and then my shoulder got in the way, so I edited it out. I mean, you can see I'm being a little sloppy Sally over here. <laughs> it's not pretty, but that's what I'm all about. I want to show you that things aren't always pretty. I mean, I want to keep it real. 20 years in the biz, friends, and sometimes it gets a little tricky. I mean, I want to go back to that perfectionist thing. I could have edited that out, not shown you the hairline because I don't want you to see that it's, I don't, I, I get a little, you know, messy sometimes, but that's the reality of it. Okay. I mean, somebody might fight me on that and tell, tell me that they never do and kudos to them, but I want to keep it real here for you all and show you that sometimes my hands go a little wonky. Oh, look at my shoulder there. Um, and sometimes it's hard. We get weird angles. And so I want you to go with it and flow with it and not be so hard on yourself. That's the most important thing. You can still give people bomb hair. Even if you're, you feel a little awkward or the foil sits a bit weird, you can go in and edit things. There's no, don't stress yourself out. Okay. So here I'm going in, you can see I'm going in at that angle because once again, I want to go parallel to the hairline to keep it a soft blended look. So it kind of looks like a V, but just remembering I'm always going parallel to where you're going to see the hair. So if she pulls it up in a ponytail. I want it to be parallel to the hairline. So you don't see any obvious stripes. Does this make sense? And so same with the, so around the hairline always, because I don't know if you've ever seen someone's hair look beautiful down and then they pull it up and you see like big racing stripes or a big chunk of blonde where the money piece is, but then dark along the sides and it just doesn't look fluid. My approach to hair is making sure it's, hair is a moving art piece. It's not one dimensional. It's like four dimensional. I don't really even know. And so, oh, scraping the last little bit out of my bowl there. Um, so I want to make sure the hair looks good every which way it sits and lays and is put. So put the way it looks being up in a ponytail is just as important to me as when it is laying down. And that's why I'm really particular about how I do the hair around the hairline as well as around the part line. You know, when they move their part, I'm ask, asking a lot of those questions in the consultation. Now I am a stickler for a solid rock solid consultation. If you didn't know, I have a whole program called Rocket Consultation. I mean, the consultation is the most important part. Hi, Poppy. <laughs> She's so sweet. Um, but here you go. There's a lot of foils in Alexa's hair there. Um, we went really thorough. I cannot wait to show you it at the sink and what we toned with. So let's dive into that. Okay, how many foils do you think are in there? Jeepers, uh, taking out the sink, nice debut by my arm again. My arm just really wanted to be the star of the show, my arm and my shoulder. <laughs> um, but 
here we are taking them out uh, just because this was a good shot and Poppy was being so cute. Okay, so after I took the foils out and gave it a good wash to get all the bleach out, we go into the toning part. You can see me turning my camera off. So I wanted to show you what it looks like raw. Look at that lift. Isn't it beautiful? Oh my gosh, I love it. And so the shadow root I did, or root tap, I did 3N because her hair is pretty dark and it's also gonna be pretty translucent. You can see here I'm using Salon Scale to sort out the cost of it all. I mean, you can't really see what's on my phone screen there, but it's really simple and it takes no time at all to put it in. At first, obviously it's gonna be a learning curve. It's like learning anything new. It's like getting a new phone. Like It's like from changing like from an Android to an iPhone or from like a a Dell computer to a Mac computer. You have to like learn new things. I mean, it takes a little bit of learning, but it's really not hard and it calculates the cost for you like in front of your eyes, which is so cool. So anyway, I used 3N, I used Shades EQ um, processing solution and we got right to it. So I'm sectioning out those front pieces cause that's where I want like the bright pop of the money piece with her hair. Um, that's a really important part of balayage and foliage honestly is to have that face framing effect. Now, if you wanna see more tutorials on money pieces and just how exactly to do them, check out the link up in the top right corner there cause you are going to love those tutorials I have on money pieces. So you can see here is, it's really, really careful. I'm using 3N, it's dark, but I want it to blend in with her natural. Now I know, I know, like I said, her, her natural is not 3N, but when I'm toning at the sink on damp hair, it's not gonna go to a three and I'm not leaving it on for the full 20 minutes. Fight me on that if you will. <laughs> I do not tone for a full 20 minutes. I know people will fight me on this. I mean, I know the instructions are is what it says. Um, and obviously I'm not sponsored by any companies because I wanna tell you, like the reason, the reason why I'm telling you this is because this is like the real life in the salon. And I mean, some people I do know tone for 20 minutes and I'm not saying it's wrong. I'm just saying there are different methods for different things. And so if you ever hear me say flash toner, that's what I mean. Now I do leave it on for a little bit longer than if I wasn't shadow rooting. Um, and here I could have been a lot more careful with this. You know, in if I could go back in time, I would have isolated this in a mesh or a foil just to keep it because I am using that 3N and I don't want it to get it on any of the light parts. But I'm using 3N once again because I know it's not going to go to a 3 because it's going to be a little translucent. But I do want to blend that demarcation line with her natural, which is about a level 5 naturally. So being really careful, once again, arm getting in the freaking way. Come on, cameraman. <laughs> my tripod move with me um so here i am doing this section and then i'm gonna tone the rest and you're gonna love it Okay, so funny story, Alexa used to be a hairstylist and we consulted on her toner together. I really wanted to use an 8V um, because I knew it wouldn't go an 8, but she was adamant about not using an 8V on her hair, so we used um, a 9V and a 9P in shades EQ um, for the rest of her hair, pulling it through. Poppy there just being the cutest little, it's, it's an Italian greyhound. She's the runt of the litter for anyone. I know someone's going to ask. Um, but there you can see I am blending that all the way through to the ends and you are going to love like just wait it's coming up it's coming real soon the end result is so freaking bomb and so I'm so curious I mean I know you, have, you, you saw a sneak peek of the end at the beginning but what did you think of this keep it parallel to all the places and look at oh my gosh it came out so nice you can see like there's still a little bit of warmth in her ends from her previous highlights I mean look at that color Look at it compared to what it was before and it looks so natural it has such a soft blend and dimension oh my gosh i mean if you love this video let me know in the comments below if you're gonna try this technique oh my gosh could you just not stare at her all day like look at that front like the 3n really blended so nicely with those highlights and even using that 9v i mean it did a 9v and 9p i mean 
the the front is a little cooler oh come on all right but like seriously i'm obsessed with the cool and the warmth mixed together i mean i told alexa it'll probably take one more time to really blend out those previous ends um and if we would have wanted to take like six hours to do her hair and at a lot higher price we could have done it but i want to show you the reality of when someone comes in for maybe a two and a half hour appointment what you can achieve with amazing results all right what did you think i always want to hear your feedback whether it's something that i missed or you want to see more of or maybe you just didn't like this tutorial i want to hear from you so go ahead and leave me a comment and while you're there why don't you go share this with a friend or hit subscribe make sure you hit subscribe because i have got some good stuff coming down the line for you and if you're like well don i want to do more of these techniques but i don't have the right clients well, go ahead and check out my client building bundle in the description below. It is going to teach you how to attract the most perfect clients, those ones that don't price haggle you, that don't try to boss you around. I'm going to show you exactly how to attract the perfect clients that you want in your chair that trust you and respect you. So go check it out and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye friend.